Welcome to another in the series of Open Philosophy videos. The topic of this video is going to be randomness in evolution. This is an important topic because the notion that evolution is random is used by atheists and naturalists to undermine the idea that God exists. Their argument is that if order can emerge from randomness, and by order they mean all of the biological species that we see around us, including ourselves, if we can emerge from randomness, then there is no need for mind in nature. So, if God exists, he plays no active role in the world. We have already seen that there are some problems with this viewpoint. First, in video 14, we learned that the laws of nature are intentional that they are analogous to human committed intentions or acts of will. And in video 15 we came to the conclusion that if we apply the logic of science in a consistent manner we necessarily come to the idea that there is a conserving God holding the laws of nature and through them all matter in being. Thus the activity of God in the world is not in doubt. Yet evolution does present problems and we need to resolve them. One approach to resolution is creationism, which basically discards all of the data of science. I find this particularly unattractive because if you're a Christian and you believe that God gave us an intellect in order to use it and that God does not lie, then certainly God does not lie in nature and that nature is a form of divine revelation to us. Another approach is so-called intelligent design. Intelligent design is essentially creationism in small steps. The idea behind intelligent design is that the laws of nature designed by God don't work. That God has constantly got to be interfering like the Wizard of Oz, standing behind the curtain, pulling levers, and doing things which don't come naturally. But if God is as omnipotent and omniscient as Christians believe, then certainly God is able to foresee the results of the laws that he wills and there is no need for him to be constantly diddling in order to achieve his ends. With this background, let's look at the problem of randomness in evolution. The modern controversy over the improbability of evolution seems to have begun with the work of Fred Hoyle and N. Chandra Wickramasinghe. They calculated the probability of assembling the enzymes required by the simplest cell as being 1 in 10 to the 40,000th. 10 to the 40,000th is 1 followed by 40,000 zeros. They compared this to the improbability of a 747 being assembled by a tornado out of junkyard parts. Thus, a completely random process has virtually no chance of explaining it. This type of calculation has been criticized because the initial self-replicating forms may have been much simpler and protein assembly is not random but guided by the laws of nature. Richard Dawkins uses the idea of randomness replacing a designing god in his book The Blind Watchmaker. So he is heavily invested in the idea and explained it in a 1987 video that he did for the BBC. Here is the segment in which he describes a computer program he wrote to illustrate his point. It would take me longer than the universe has existed so far in order to reach even one single phrase of Shakespeare like, say, methinks it is like a weasel. So what I did was to take that very phrase and write a computer program to simulate a monkey typing at random. And at the same time, I wanted to compare the performance of the computer typing at random with the computer following a more Darwinian procedure of cumulative selection. At the top of the screen is the target phrase in green, methinks it is like a weasel. And at the bottom are the random tries of our computer monkey. And that's changing completely at random. There's no sense to that at all, just random letters of the alphabet are being chosen. And that'll go on for millions of years, unless a miracle happens. In the middle is a line labeled Darwin. And that line is changing at random, but every time a letter changes in such a way that the phrase is a little bit more like 
the target phrase, and he thinks it is like a weasel. Then that phrase is bred from. We breed from that phrase, make children from it. And so as the generations go by, that phrase, Darwin, becomes progressively, cumulatively, more like the target phrase, he thinks it is like a weasel. Well, it's only been going a couple of minutes, but already we've got the complete word weasel, the complete word methinks. It's getting really very close. Poor old Random down there is just going on completely without any progress at all. Although this is a fairly good model for Darwinism in that it is cumulative selection, in another way it's really a bit of a cheat. Because this program is homing in on a distant target. He thinks it is like a weasel. It's looking into the future. Real evolution is blind to the future. Nevertheless, Darwin has done it. We prove the principle of accumulating chance in little bits, cumulative selection. Thank you, Richard. Dawkins has been honest enough to admit that his program is a cheat, but he has mischaracterized exactly why it is a cheat. Listen carefully. It's really a bit of a cheat, because this program is homing in on a distant target. He thinks it is like a weasel. It's looking into the future. Real evolution is blind to the future. Of course the program isn't looking into the future at all. It's not clairvoyant. It doesn't know what the future holds. What it's really doing is exactly what Dawkins programmed it to do. To move forward at each step toward the goal that he has pre-programmed in. In other words, he has programmed it to have a present tendency to achieve a future goal. It's looking at the here and now and doing exactly what Dawkins programmed it to do here and now, namely, move toward its goal. How does it do this? It does it in exactly the same way that natural laws work, by following pre-programmed rules in the same way that natural processes follow the laws of nature. Why does this matter? What am I quibbling about? about the dynamics of goal-driven processes. Dawkins wants us to believe that the future has got to reach back into time and pull things forward toward an end. This is one way in which naturalists seek to discredit the idea of teleology, finality, or goals in nature. They would have us believe that the only ways in which goals can be effective is by reaching back into time and pulling processes toward themselves. Of course, this is absurd, as we can see by looking at how human goals operate. If I've decided to go to the store, the store doesn't reach back in time and pull me toward itself. Rather, I engage in a series of activities that will get me to the store. My intention works here and now, and causes me to do things which will bring me closer to my end. We discussed this kind of concurrent causality in video 13, and we saw that all of the laws of nature work in this way, by concurrent causality. Unless a law is operative here and now, it has no effect here and now. So what have we really learned from Dawkins' program? What we have learned is that to overcome improbability, we need a goal-driven process. In Dawkins' case, the goal, me thinks it is a weasel, was programmed in explicitly. The letters were placed right into the code. But that need not be the case. No matter how it was coded, explicitly or implicitly, the program would have worked in the same way as long as it had the same target. Thus, the program illustrates the necessity of targets in order to overcome prior improbability. Where then are the targets in the case of evolution? Just as in the case of a computer, they are built into the controlling code, so in natural processes, they are built into the controlling laws of nature. In the case of evolution, the laws go by the name of natural selection, and the criteria of natural selection are the implicit coding of the target form suitable for any environment. Similarly, the criteria of natural selection are determined by the laws of nature, which are, as we learned in video 14, completely intentional. Thus, God maintains in existence intentional laws of nature which determine or pre-programmed the results of evolution. The only randomness in evolution is due to our human inability to predict its outcome. Of course, the claim that there are pre-programmed targets in evolution is a strong claim. We will have to verify this by looking at the actual data of evolution. We will begin in our next video. Mm -hmm.